So John, one of the things that really stood out from this year's Global Drug Survey results was the fact that almost one in four users of um, GBL or GHB had passed out in the last year. Now we know that alcohol massively increases the risk of passing out when you use G, but obviously one of the other important things is dose. Yes. And because it's a liquid, it's kind of difficult to dose. I'm, I'm just wondering if you can take us through what some of those issues are. Absolutely. I mean, if you buy GBL on the internet, you, you're going to get a bottle of it like this. It's going, to, it's going to be sold to you as a cleaning agent or something other than as a drug. So this is a 500 ml uh, bottle of, of GBL. And of course, if you try and pour it out from that, it's really difficult to uh, assess the quantity. So it, it'll often be used in dropping bottles like this. So that will be decanted into one of these little bottles. And then you have a, 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 a sort of pipette and you can uh, measure the dose that way. And that says how many mils you're taking and things, yeah. okay. Yes, exactly. But, it's, uh, but of course, to try and do that in a, in a club or uh, when you're out is, is, is pretty difficult. So we've seen people repackaging it. So we, we've seen it in, for example, these little sushi bottles. And I've seen that um, in Australia a lot as well. Yes, yeah, so, so they'll contain a, cu a couple of mils and that obviously reduces your likelihood of overdose because if you take all of it, it isn't an overdose, that's the point. Absolutely. We've also seen it packaged in drinking straws, heat sealed drinking straws. So this one's got GBL in it. Again, a, a unit dose, if you like, you know, which makes it less likely that you might overdose. We've seen that this year that the average dose that people are taking at a time is between one and two mils, yeah. and people are trying to leave that dose more than a couple of hours, because one of the things that seems to predict harm is how frequently you're taking it, and those people who are needing to take it every hour are building up tolerance and possibly dependence. Um, but as you said, in a club, using a pipette is a really difficult thing to do. Mm. Any other things people are doing, perhaps, to try and make their use a bit safer? We've also seen them in, seen GBL in, in, in capsules. So these are refillable capsules, and they hold about a mil and a half of, of, of GBL. Um, and that's another way of effectively producing a, a, a unit dose. So really quite a good harm minimisation strategy, I think. Ab absolutely. I, I, I guess, though, one of my worries is, is that this is also a drug that can affect your memory. Yeah. And so actually people can sometimes not remember when they last took a dose or how many doses they've taken over a night. And certainly working in medic medical Mardi Gras in Australia, one of the things we would see typically when people came round from passed out is they would search their pockets for their little fishies not remembering if they had any on them. Yeah. And, and I guess that's one of the other things that adds to people's vulnerability. Because when people pass out on GHB, they are unbelievably unconscious, incredibly vulnerable to assault, but also they can't remember Absolutely. what's happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think one of the other really important things is people look out for their mates on G. Certainly. Uh, There's also some interesting legal issues, of course, because G GBL is a controlled substance when it's for human consumption. And in this form, you could argue that it's a cleaner of some sort. But as soon as you start to put it in the capsules, then uh, it becomes more obvious that it is for human consumption. So it might well be that this would be regarded as an illegal product, whereas perhaps these products might not be. So you reduce your risks in one way and increase them in another. Absolutely. Thank you, John.